Good morning, it's Pastor Trish. It's Wednesday, uh, November 10th. I'm uh, a day or so late this week. I was at Fall Theological Conference the last couple of days, but back in the office today and wanting to just spend a little bit of time visiting with you about our gospel reading for this coming week. This is really the last Sunday of ordinary time in our church year. Next Sunday, the 21st, is Christ the King Sunday, and then the last Sunday of November, we begin Advent. We begin a new season in the church year. So this is considered the last Sunday of ordinary time. And we have for our gospel reading, the gospel of Mark chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. So I want to read that for us and then just talk a little bit about this particular gospel reading. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in, my, come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of of the birth pangs. So this particular passage in Mark is often talked about um, or described as being the little apocalypse. Apocalyptic literature, of course, is literature that describes the end of times, that describes the end of the world as we know it, looking to a future world in which the reign of Christ is complete, those kinds of things. And this is one is considered the little apocalypse. There's also, with biblical scholars, no surprise, uh, disagreement about whether or not that's an appropriate title for this particular passage. Um, some argue that this is not apocalyptic literature because it doesn't follow the traditional uh, genre, the traditional kind of outline in terms of other apocalyptic literature. It doesn't have these symbolic visions that are often being interpreted by a heavenly revealer. Think, of course, Revelation is the apocalyptic book that we think about, and Daniel as well. It's likely that you will at Messiah, and it's likely in your other churches you'll hear some words from Daniel as well out of the Old Testament this year. And so you hear a different kind of interpretation. And some argue that what we simply have here is something happening or somebody making a comment and Jesus responding to his disciples and so that it doesn't have this interpretive quality that a lot of other apocalyptic literature would be. One of my favorite commentaries or commentators, I should say, Brian Stoppergen, um, talks about this a little bit more. And then I appreciate what he says. He goes into detail and he talks about the different kinds of literature that I think help us to understand where this might be placed. And so he talks about three different kinds of literature, prophetic, uh, wisdom, and then apocalyptic, and the differences. So I thought you might be interested in that as well. Prophetic literature is one in which we understand that the present time there is suffering going on for believers. But the reason that is happening is because people have sinned. And so the future, the prophecy is that if you stop sinning, it will get better. If you keep sinning, it's not going to happen. So prophetic literature looks at the current suffering of the believers, but calls them to new ways, calls them to repent and to stop sinning in order for the future to be changed. Wisdom literature talks about how the present time might be a time of blessing or a time of suffering for believers. And often that has kind of a cause and effect system going. Depending on if you're righteous, you're going to be blessed. If you are acting in an unrighteous way, 
that might be why you're going to be suffering. Think about wisdom literature a lot of ways in terms of reward and punishment. You do well, you get rewarded. You don't do so well, you'll be punished for it. And that may or may not always work. You know, there's a lot of other things that go with it. But that's fairly common in wisdom literature. And the easy easy place to see that, go to the book of Proverbs and uh, see all those wonderful little tidbits that we have that encourage us to be uh, people of grace and goodness. And so then there's the apocalyptic literature that we're talking about today. In an apocalyptic literature, we understand once again that the present time is a time of suffering for the believers. The question here, why? So we're trying to always answer that, why is there suffering, right? And with apocalyptic literature, we understand that there's suffering in the present time because the believers, those who believe or who are faithful, are living in the midst of evil. And so uh, apocalyptic literature often calls us to be patient and to wait, to recognize that the world will change at some point. Those who are evil will be punished, will be taken away from this world, and that once again, the blessings will come those kinds of things. Um, Stafford Jane gave a couple of examples, I think, that help us. So think about uh, a kid who's misbehaving and mom says, just wait till your father comes home. She's not saying keep misbehaving until your father comes home, right? She is asking him to stop now to, be, to, to change, recognizing what the future might hold if you don't stop. And then another way to think about it is someone who's dealing with cancer and all of the suffering you go through now, the treatments you're willing to undertake with the hope that it will help, that everything will be better in the future. And so how we act today in apocalyptic literature, we hope will impact how we'll be able to live in the future when evil is no more and those kinds of things. So Stafford then would say that given this particular definition, what we heard in Mark 13 would be some apocalyptic liter literature where Jesus is saying, this is what's happening now. It's going to get even worse, but be patient, wait, keep watchful. This is just the beginning of the birth pangs. And we would understand, of course, birth pangs meaning pain now for a blessing in the future when the world has changed. So just kind of to wrap this up, I just want you to be aware of what the world was like when Mark was being written, because I always think that that can be helpful for us as well. So we're thinking probably in about the 60s common era, 60s after, after Christ lived and died and uh, rose again. Um, Josephus was kind of the go-to historian for those particular times. And he talks about this particular time period as being one of famine, social unrest, institutional deterioration, bitter internal conflicts, class warfare, banditry, insurrection, intrigue, betrayal, bloodshed, but bloodshed, excuse me, and the scattering of Judeans throughout Palestine. During this time, there were lots of stories about popular messiahs, about a new Christ coming, lots of prophets crying out about the woes of the city, uh, uh, the um, uh, Roman, Jewish Roman war was uh, happening and taking place, uh, lots of, lots of turmoil. And again, so to hear about this wars and rumors of war and, and all of those kinds of things makes a lot of sense. So then the final question is, right, what's it mean for us today? Why should we care? And um, uh, I'm still just getting kind of started with thinking about this for a sermon on Sunday. Uh, certainly, there have been many worse times in our history of humanity than what we're living in right now. But I think most of us would say this is a far from easy time to be alive for so many reasons. Some of the things that were happening in the 60s, like betrayal and uh, um, institutional deterioration, bitter internal conflicts, class warfare, uh, all bloodshed, uh, many similarities, not completely, but certainly we can find a number of similarities between the time Mark was being written 
in our time today. And so I think it begs the question, what does it mean for us today? And what are we called to do in these difficult times? If we feel like we sometimes are the people of faith living in a world that is, has much more evil than would we, we would like, what are we called to do in this moment? And what are the promises that we hope will be ours as well? And um, so just some of those thoughts to think about. What, uh, what does it mean for us? And of course, in apocalyptic literature, uh, the encouragement was always to be patient, to wait, to watch for signs of those birth pangs, for those signs of the new world that is coming. And so perhaps that were, is where we can end today. What are the signs that we can see where we are moving out of the turmoil we have been in over the last several years? And what still needs to be birthed? Um, where do you think we might be in this process? And uh, how patient must we be and can we be? All right. Thanks for joining me for a few minutes this morning. A reminder for uh, Messiah members, those coming to worship, we'll be back to two worship services again this coming Sunday after a couple of Messiah Worships United. So please join us uh, 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. And as always, our 8.30 service will also be broadcast right here on Facebook Live. Stay warm. We'll enjoy the rain and perhaps the change of weather and uh, stay warm as well. Have a good day. Thanks again for joining me.